Dear students, welcome to this screen lecture about being an e-learning student. My name is Inger Kristin Hegdalsvik and I'm an assistant professor at Western Norway University of Applied Sciences, Department of Welfare and Participation. To take part in an international e-learning course might be challenging for all of us due to language barriers and maybe the digital and cultural challenges. In this lecture, I will start to talk about some of the assumptions you might have. I will also present our perspectives on learning and in the end, give you some advice for your studies. Those of you who are new to a virtual classroom might wonder what it is like to be an e-learning student compared to a campus student. The first thing that comes to your mind might be, how will this way of studying turn out when I'm not going to have face-to-face -face contact with the other students and the teachers? Others might think, oh, great. Now I definitely have the chance to follow my own time schedule and do not need to go to lectures at campus at a fixed time. You might also have other thoughts about how e-learning differs from campus studies. I will now start presenting an introduction where you hopefully get some answers to the considerations you might have and frequently asked questions. How to work without face-to-face -face contact? By using an online conference room, we hope to compensate face-to-face -face contact and give you an opportunity to be online at the same time in the learning platform. In that way, you will be in direct contact with your fellow students and teachers in your course. You will also have the possibility to arrange online meetings on your own, where you can invite fellow students to join discussions or solve questions you might have. Of course, when you upload a short video of yourself in combination with some information, it provides everyone with more opportunities for personal impressions and contact. Hopefully, you will find that you can become friends in the virtual classroom and maybe some of you will meet each other face to face later by the possibilities of student exchange programs or by traveling around the world. Now, let's move on to the next topic. To follow your own time schedule and not follow lectures at a fixed time. Most of you will be students at full-time programs, doing internships or having part-time jobs, and in that way, be quite busy already before the virtual course have started. The lectures in this course are all presented online. You can both read and look at the screen lectures and they will be available to you whenever you like, as long as you can connect to internet. You have, of course, also the possibility to print a paper version of the text. However, there is a fixed schedule in the course that you need to follow in order to make progress. It is necessary to follow the course schedule to deliver the assignments in time and to cooperate in the group assignments. To encourage you to make progress, the teachers will give you feedback if your tasks are submitted in time. Please note, as we have different time zones and to be sure that we are online at the same time, please consult the world clock and the time zone converter. Awareness of this is of course important when you make appointments about online discussions and delivery of assignments. Perspectives on e-learning in WorkCamp courses. In a learning situation, there are usually two partners with different defined roles, the students and the teachers. The definition of these roles might differ depending on the learning perspective we have. 
In classic behavioristic teaching tradition, the teachers represent the knowledge and the students are the receivers of knowledge. The pedagogy and structure of this course is based on social constructivist theory and a social cultural learning perspective. This perspective opens the possibility to look at commonalities and differences in an open-minded and non-restrictive way of thinking. Curiosity and an open-minded interest in differences of social work in a multicultural perspective is of great importance when we want to explore the way social work appears in different parts of the world. According to Vygotsky, social cooperation is of great importance for learning. All learning is of a social character and as a result of this, students will develop their learning potential in cooperation with other students. This learning perspective also presents a more equal definition of roles. Both teachers and students are participants in this learning arena. This perspective means that the teachers in this course will be facilitators and guides on the side for students in their learning process. The students need to communicate both with fellow students and teachers to be able to solve their assignments. One of the five core pedagogical principles in WorkCamp courses is to create a virtual learning environment where students feel inspired, safe and confident. To do this, we try to guide you into the virtual learning platform canvas through tutorials. In order to have a good start as a student in this online course, it is important that you follow the instructions and do the preparatory assignments. These will guide you into the new learning arena and help you to understand how to navigate and where to find the learning material and the content. Another pedagogical principle is the problem-based or task-oriented way of learning. We believe that by working with problem solving, you will be inspired to look into different aspects of social work from an international perspective. Our third intention is to stimulate cooperation, interaction and dialogue among students and teachers in different countries. This is of course of great importance since we intend to make this classroom to an international environment where students and teachers interact and learn from each other. We want to promote an open and transparent learning atmosphere. Transparency is understood as an open classroom where students upload their assignments for teachers and fellow students to see and comment. The only way to learn from each other is openness towards fellow students about what we do. Of the same principle, the feedback from teachers will be open for all participants in the course to see and read. We hope that you will appreciate this open approach and find that you can learn a lot from each other. This open approach ends in the last week of the course because you will be working with your final assignment. As earlier mentioned, as students you will be asked to both give and receive help from fellow students to be able to solve the assignments in this course. This forced interaction is in fact one of the learning tools. Without this interaction, you might simply be a self-study student. The fourth principle is the importance of self-reflection on learning as part of your learning process and professional development. Reflection on learning will be presented to you in another screen lecture by Anne-Karin Larsen. The fifth and last principle is academic writing. Students are advised to use the upper sixth style of references. The screen lecture by Katrin Ferelst presents expectations of techniques and principles of how to practice academic writing. The use of Canvas as a learning management system. 
In the beginning of this course, you were introduced to Canvas as the learning platform through tutorials and user guide. Canvas has, in addition, online support pages where instructions and answers to frequently asked questions are easy accessible. How to act in the virtual classroom? In our virtual classroom, we emphasize respect and expect participants to be considerate towards fellow students and teachers. Be aware that what you write is difficult to delete and make sure that you do not offend participators in the classroom. Since we do not meet face to face, it usually takes more time to sort out misunderstandings. Both students and teachers are responsible for creating a good atmosphere in the classroom. And a good rule of thumb is to speak for oneself and clarify what might be the problem. Language and cultural challenges. Entering an international course is a new experience for most of us. There are many questions connected to social work on a comparative level and none of us are experts. That is also what makes this course both challenging and interesting. Most of the students and teachers will communicate in a foreign language, English. This, of course, can challenge us in terms of what we manage to express and communicate to each other. If possible, our advice is to use an electronic dictionary. However, the best way to improve our language skills is to practice. So please do not hesitate to be a part of the classroom by responding to discussions, questions, conferences, and to present yourself. Last but not least is awareness of the cultural differences we will experience. To be able to cooperate in this virtual classroom, we need some rules, guidelines for how and when to communicate with each other. You will be dependent on information and support from each other to deliver your assignments on time and to be able to receive feedback from the teachers. This means that you can be of great help, but you can also cause unnecessary stress to others by not keeping appointments. I hope this lecture has been helpful when you now are about to start your studies in a virtual classroom together with international students and teachers in a group. Good luck.